Greetings and welcome to another edition of the Jacksonville Buzz. I am your host, Adrienne Houghton, and joining me in the studio today is Kevin Jones, and he is the senior curator at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising Museum in Los Angeles, and our very own Holly Kerris, who is the chief curator at the Kummer Museum and Gardens. Welcome to you both. Thank it's good you. to see you. you. Good to see you. Now we're going to be talking about the latest exhibition. So Kevin, yes. tell me, what is it? Oh, this has been something that's been anticipated for a long time, uh, for at least three years at least now. Three. And it is sporting fashion, outdoor girls, 1800 to 1960. So it is a complete look at the development of sportswear for women. And I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me is how much sportswear was there for women? Because weren't they sort of little ladies that just drank tea and things? <laughs> right, and had corsets on and fainted. Yes. No, no, <laughs> that's the thing that's really interesting. My colleague, uh, co-curator, Christina Johnson, and I really wanted to look at how women's sportswear developed. Everybody know what, knows what sportswear is now, right. but this kind of, it doesn't fall out of the sky. You know, it, it has no. to evolve and, and shape itself over time and need. And, you know, if a man was out doing something fun outdoors sporty, and there was a woman interested in that, she would figure out a way to participate in her time period and what was appropriate, and she would figure out what she could wear and what fabrics were available and you know it was a really interesting development yeah. over this 160 years that we're looking at we think of it as sports sports wear christina and i call it sport fashion because mm. all of this came out of fashionable dress everybody knew what was the fashion of their era how could they adapt what they knew about to what they wanted to do? So it wasn't necessarily practical for whatever they were doing, but... They would take it, fashion and make it practical for, the fa for that sport, but aspects of design were always blended into it yes. because it was coming out of fashion. So, so tell me, what are the highlights of, of uh, this particular exhibition for you? Well, the highlights actually are the objects. This is the first exhibition that I know of that's ever been done that charts the development of women's sportswear through the actual objects. This project took about 12 years to put together because we had to find the objects. And when you go in, I told, I had a docent training yesterday, and I, I said to their docents, make sure that you, you, you tell all of the visitors that these are real they're objects real. they're looking at. None of this is oh. recreation, reproduction. These are actual historical, historical artifacts from their different time periods. So no wonder it took you a long time to get together. Mm -hmm. Now we don't often have fashion exhibitions at the Kama. We've had we've had we've had a couple. Yes. And when we've done them, they've been so popular. But when I heard about sporting fashion, you know, all the way back in 2020 or 2019 or however right. long we've been talking about this, I love the fact that it was you know period clothing because yes. the fashion shows that we haven't done at the Kummer have been more contemporary. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is this is really exciting for us to be able to offer this to our community. And I think people are going to be astounded at what Kevin and the Fitton Museum have put together. Did you come up up against any challenges whilst putting this together? I mean, you you've been traveling around with it, so you're you're used to it. Right. But what were the initial challenges? Do you think? I think the challenges for the exhibition, and that's why I love the Kummer Galleries. They are so marvelous. Is space. Mm -hmm. This is a very large exhibition. There are 64 fully dressed mannequins head to toe, plus, plus. additional accessories that are in cases. In total, there are 480 individual objects. Oh, I'm so excited. So, I mean, there's a lot to see. Plus, we have um, fashion plates and period magazines. Everything has uh, text to go with it, so you can really dive in as deeply as you want to. Just look at the objects or read all about them. And they're full ensembles, so they have hats and shoes and scarves and oh, sometimes even you know uh, their sporting accessories so right. their their Every golf club. club their basketball yeah it's wonderful and one of the things also that i'm excited about is we have underwear that was worn underneath no one's ever really talked about well what was going on underneath these garments that allowed the women to do what they were doing or something limited, particularly or, uncomfortable or I'm limited sure. yeah. what they were doing but, right you know that's one of the things that we wanted to talk about too was you know we dress a certain way now 
Women dressed a certain way at other times, but they were just as comfortable in their day as we are in ours. Now we're running out of time. I could keep talking to you about <laughs> this for a long time. When is it taking place? When does it finish? So it opens on February 28th, and it's going to be with us through the middle of May. Oh. So I encourage everyone to check out our social yeah. media and our website to stay abreast with all the programs that we're doing during the next 12 weeks. Thank you so much for coming in. It's Thank a pleasure you. to talk to you. And don't forget, if you'd like to know any more information about the exhibition at the Comer, you can also find it on thejacksonvillebuzz.com. <laughs>